So welcome to part three of this uh, series of videos on my 3D printer build. I've uh, been busy, been busy making parts. So um, these are the remote uh, pulley stroke belt tensioner assemblies, left and right. So they will bolt to the side frame of those two points and then the adjusting bolts go in the back so when they're turned it will pull the thing that way. Uh, the way I made these, get a bit closer, so I made these top and bottom plates slightly bigger and then I made the center section bolt with the top and bottom plates on and then machined around the edges so they line up perfectly and then I line board through for the uh, bearings for the pulley shaft because that had to be perfectly aligned so I didn't want to bore it first and then bolt the plates on because I might not have lined up properly. So um, 40 tooth pulley which will go off to the motor, 8 mil diameter shaft, uh, flats milled on it where the grub screws go, um, then 8 mil bearing, that side flange bearing, <coughs> one bottom one at the top, uh, spacer, pulley and another spacer. This is the left hand one so it's got an ultra miniature micro switch on it. So that will be for homing the Y axis. Um, those are M2 screws so that was fun threading, um, tapping two mil down the holes. So yeah two of those and then these plates, two of these, um, they bolt to the front frame member and then they have these bolts so the counter sunk so these bolts won't protrude and then these bolts engage with those holes so turn the screw and it pulls that back. So there will be um, a small access hole in the front frame to get hex key in to those bolt heads. So to adjust tension we'll be um, slacken those, the two bolts there that will clamp it to the rail, slacken those off a bit and then um, tension is, turn, turn the screws that will pull it in, tension the belt and then clamp them up again. I'll probably put a lock nut on these screws as well. That's that and then uh, motor mounts, two motor mounts, so they bolt to the front frame and then short short belt from from motor mount to shaft. Do it that way around you can see. I'm trying to do this mirror imaged because <clears throat> anyway, um, so moving forward, then we've got the the Y carriage plates. So that's uh, that's an inner and that's an outer. So basically, these will form an assembly which goes with these slot wheels in the middle, and then that goes back and forwards. That's the Y carriage. So. Here is an, an inner that's assembled with its pulleys. So it'd be very expensive to make that out of one lump. So these two plates were made separately and then they're bolted onto this plate. This is three mil, these are six mil, and those are the two pulleys upper and lower. So you can see the belts will be in the middle. So one comes in one side, one comes in the other, and they go that way and right in the centre of the x-axis. On my existing machine I use uh, bolts like this for the for the pulley shafts but they're being stainless steel they're quite heavy so I made these little shafts instead which are aluminium that's those with an, uh, this, uh, an uh, R-clip top and bottom just to stop them from falling out. Um, again spacers 
to turn up those faces as well. Um, ah, right, so that goes together like that. The X rail goes through that rectangular slot. And then on the back plate where it exits, I've got these, these clamps. So that hole will go into a T-nut in the carriage. And those two holes bolt onto the plate like that. I'm going to do it like that. So that will lock the X rail in place and stop it going that way. Then next up is the complicated bit. So this is the um, this is the hot end mount, the swiveling, pivoting nozzle probing hot end mount so the the lgx extruder bolts to this this part so two holes that go in the base and um, two holes that go inside of it so the lgx will bolt to that then this part bolts to the carriage so you can see how it's hinged so uh, hinge pin goes through there. So that was bored and reamed in, in one piece. Um, the pin's got flats on it. And then there are grub screws in the top to hold it in place. At the moment, I haven't put the wavy washers, which will slot, stop that sideways play. So it's a, that's just a, a trial fit. <clears throat> I still haven't yet found a leaf spring to go in here to oh before I get to that uh, on the bottom is the brass plate which will be the the physical stop there'll be a brass bolt going in there so it's the physical stop against which it sits but it's also one half of the switch so this this half will go to ground so I haven't decided which side the wire will be. I'll put a separate wire on that brass plate so make sure it's a good ground. Um, so I've drilled and tapped each end so there's a bolt in either side. What I have found <coughs> is some of this stuff which is what you get if you buy um, integrated circuits or whatever and it's um, it's a kind of it's spongy but it's really springy spongy and it just fits nicely in there and it's just the right tension but I don't know whether it all it feels like it you know it's quite elastic it to uh, it wants to stay expanded so it's acting like a spring but I'll keep looking out for a leaf spring if I don't find anything better this might might be a substitute that I can use then we have X carriage uh, front plate so just like the wire plate plate either side with the rear wheels in between so they're a bit like an axle so that's the back plate so they'll go like that with v-slot wheels in between and then run in that direction coming back to this that hot end mount bolts onto there uh, like that so that's how it will be on the gantry so it can uh, still pivot like that for Z homing and the whole thing will slide that way. So that's the back plate and then in between the two I've made the, where are we? the side plates so they go on like that kind of thing. Get bolted to each half. They're not structural as such, they're there to provide the slot in the middle through which the belts will run. So the belts will be exactly in line with the centre of the x-axis. They'll enter through this slot, this side, and then go 90 degrees, and through that slot there, and then on the other side they do another 90 degrees, and then they get clamped in place with these little clamps so that's uh, M3 
threaded M3 in there and then these clamps will have bolts like that and they will pinch the belt and basically hold it in place. So that's the front plate, that's the front plate. Two of these, two of these side plates, four belt clamps. Um, that's all good and then moving back um, finally at the back of the machine I've got the rear idler plates which are these things, four of those so uh, got a pointer, trusty pointer uh, so these these two holes um, bolt to the bolt this plate to the back rail and this pole bolts it to the side rail so it's cut out there to clear the leg and then this hole this hole is for the shaft which we'll use a bolt for at the moment which will go in there so like that with obviously the pulleys in between. It's got the pulleys and then you can get the idea there will be spaces either side of these pulleys as well. So that kind of thing. That's the rear. The rear idle mounts that will be the left hand one. I've got the parts for the right hand one as well. Um, so that's about it for now. So I've been busy. Oh, uh, one other thing. Uh, feet. So I've made these plates to go on the bottom. So the legs will be 40-40. Um, these are 60 by 60. Um, so they will, I'll tap the bottom of the legs and then these will bolt onto the leg. And then I've got these adjustable feet that will screw into that plate. The reason these are 60 by 60 is the leg will go there but then the bottom rails need to be um, exactly in line with the bottom of the leg because everything gets that will be my datum point for when I'm assembling the rest of it. Um, so having these sturdy plates bolted to the bottom of the feet gives a nice flat surface against which the other rails can sit when I put them on. So be a, a good datum. So that's roughly where we're at at the moment. So that's most of the machining done. I've got some other little bits and bobs to do. And then um, ah one other thing. One other thing I forgot to mention is that on the the back plate on the X gantry, there's the front plate, there's the back plate. Back plate, I've got a series of six holes there, there, and there. And they are to take this little beauty, which is so that will go on there like that, uh, which is a duet tool board. And duet very kindly sent me that, they've donated that, so I'm really grateful for that. So, so that goes like that. Front plate on there, um, hot end mounted on there. So then everything to do with the hot end gets connected to this board. So that's heater, thermistor, uh, cooling fan for the heat sink, part cooling fan, stepper motor um, and the Y or the X axis homing switch. Um, oh yeah, I forgot something else I forgot. So just like just like that has a miniature micro switch on it. This end plate has um, has been drilled and tapped M2 to take a micro switch on there so that will be the x-axis homing switch which will get 
connected to the tool board. So then the only thing I'll need, when that's all built up with the hot end and everything, I can wire everything in and then the only thing I need to do is supply power and data to this. So it makes the wiring really neat and easy. Um, so although I'm planning on enclosing the printer, um, mostly because of this, I'm not planning on going to silly high temperatures with it. I probably won't go above 50 degrees C in the chamber just to protect these electronic. Basically the hotter you go, the shorter the life of any electronic component. So, But it'll be uh, neat and tidy. I'm trying to avoid any kind of cable chain if I can when I build it. <clears throat> when I build it. So that's about all I've got to say for now. Just a quick update. Um, I have a plan for prettying these parts up a bit, but we'll see how that works. So I've made some headway in raising funds, and thanks to uh, various people's generosity, uh, I'm making progress, but um, I'm still saving. So uh, I, yeah, the most expensive bit is going to be the print head, which I've almost got enough money for, but then I need some extrusion as well. I'm trying to reuse as much as I can from the existing printer but I will need to buy uh, a certain amount so um, I'll keep plugging away but further updates may depend on the availability of funds shall we say um, so anyway thanks for watching and I'll keep you posted <laughs>